Good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more seconds uh, for for you to get your and get your notepads ready, pen and paper, um, and for this interactive, informative uh, webinar that uh, that we have ready for you uh, from a, a phenomenal presenter, yes, Nay. And um, but like by all means, uh, if there's any particular questions throughout today's uh, webinar, um, Luby, Steve, and I will be more than happy to moderate them on your behalf in the Q&A. This is a good opportunity for you to introduce yourself. It's the power of networking. Uh, what type of business do you have? Um, how is your financial management? Do you have a QuickBooks? Are you starting to learn how to use QuickBooks? Where are you in the process of QuickBooks as this is an informative webinar to give you those tools necessary to grow your business? Also, this is a recorded webinar. So in case you have to step out, um, answer a phone call, um, you know, all participants will be receiving today's webinar along with the link through um, through our YouTube channel. So definitely encourage you to like and subscribe as well. Okay. So I'll go briefly describe what is the Miami Dade Business Navigator Program. It is in funded through a, a cooperative agreement through the US Small Business Administration. It was established in part of the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 that uses the community navigator approach to help you, the small business owners. It, the program is comprised as a lead hub. In this case, it is the Florida SBDC at FIU as a network of spoke organizations that employ community advocates to work with small businesses. The overall goal is to improve the economic recovery and the resiliency among the small businesses and is focused placed on businesses owned by veterans, women, as well as socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. Along with the Florida SBDC at FIU, and also with branches as one of our spokes, we have five other organizations that will be able to assist you. If you're looking for access to capital, marketing, government contracting, starting a business, business planning, all these seven organizations are able to assist you as we have Ascendis, the EDC of South Miami-Dade, the Miami Dade Chamber of Commerce, Los Peda, SARPA Fire Procurement, and the Florida SBDC at FIU. As overall, we have closely to 25 consultants at your disposal. Once again, at no cost to you in all different faucets of what small business entails. We have great consultants amongst the seven organizations to assist you at no cost once again. The focus is to create that local navigator approach by in the three key pillars by consulting, mentoring, and training. Uh, this is uh, this pro uh, program is for the Miami Dade businesses. But if your business is located in Palm Beach, Broward, Monroe County, we'll be more than happy to assist you with your business needs. Now, if your business is located outside of that jurisdiction, don't worry. I will put my email in the chat. So, and I'll be more than happy to connect you with your local as um, a small business resource partner. And this is a good opportunity for you to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. That is where today's presentation will be uploaded once I receive the video file, along with a plethora of um, webinars that we have held already to have that conversation, the engagement, and enhancing those meetings with our business consultants on the Navigator program. Definitely follow us on our social media channels as we have upcoming events, resources, and tools to assist you. And definitely visit us at our website as we have success stories, upcoming events once again. Also get to know more about the program and how we can assist you at no cost once again. And last but not least, allow me to introduce you to one of our great colleagues and spokes uh, br uh, branches. And I'll have uh, Steve Armin to introduce you uh, the branches, the initiatives and programs that they have to offer. So Steve, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jesus. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a real, real pleasure to say hello and welcome. And uh, I do want to really start off by thanking Jesus and the Navigator for being such amazing partners and for helping uh, with the co-hosting of today's event. Um, I always say Jesus is the glue that keeps us all together. And uh, we could never really repay Jesus for the great work that he does. So Jesus, thanks again from Branches. We really appreciate you, man. Anytime. Um, here for. It's it's also such a pleasure to, always a pleasure to introduce, I, I call him my best friend in the world, my colleague, Luby Sumlar. Right, who's a micro mentor here at Branches. And, uh, you know, last by no means least, we are so privileged 
We are so happy. We are so blessed to have Yaz Ney Montalvo be our expert presenter today. Um, there's history with Yaz Ney and Branches. Um, she used to be an employee at Branches some years ago, and she's never lost her commitment and her heart to helping Branches and the people that we serve. And Yaz Ney, such uh, an amazing honor to have you here today. So thank you, Yasna. I know you're very busy. And the fact that you've decided to join us and to lead this training for the next three weeks, we are really, really privileged and uh, grateful. Right? So guys, uh, permit me to share just uh, uh, a little bit about branches now. Um, and I'm going to share a screen with you. Right? Um, The... And Steve, in the time being, as you're loading up your screen, if you, if you have any questions, so I see some hands raised. Um, I strongly encourage you to put them in the Q and A. So like that, throughout today's uh, webinar, we'll <clears> be <throat> able to moderate them on your behalf. So, guys, uh, Branches is really pleased to uh, to introduce our entrepreneurial growth platform, right? Um, we this is done in the in in true what we're calling our B1 platform and initiative. And B1 is an acronym. Branches encourages one network for everyone. I'm really happy to see a number of our entrepreneurs in today's session. And all of them can you know testify to the amazing opportunities and benefits that's now being placed in everybody's hands through the B1 platform and network, right? So what B1 is, like I said, it's an entrepreneurial growth platform. And it's a tool, but it's also a community. So there's the website, the QR code takes you directly to the website. But when you sign up into the website, you actually get admission to a whole social media platform which is our own private membership community for businesses in Miami-Dade. So I do wanna encourage you if, you, if you want to be a part of this community and benefit from all of the services, all of the resources that we have in the or in and through the platform, you can sign up through the web platform or you can download the app, right? Um, and so the, the, the website is branchesb1.org. And if you wanted to download the app, either through the App Store or through Google Play, right? It's branches B1, it's three words, and you can sign up. The only thing is that you have to have a properly registered business. So your business needs to be registered in Sunbiz. And when you upload, uh, your, when you download uh, the profile and you, you upload your information, you do want to upload a photo of yourself, right? Um, if you if you apply and you do not upload your photo and you're not a registered business, you will not be approved until you do register your business and you do complete the profile properly. And what you will discover in this is a plethora of opportunities and resources that allows you to learn and develop on your own time I think the greatest part of this is that you are now a part of a community of businesses. You know, when, when I was growing up, we were told that, uh, you know, it's not just what you know, but it's who you know. And now we live in a time when it's not just what you know and, and who you know, but who knows you, right? So com the community and the importance of networking, right, is exceptionally important if you are to make your exponential leap into success and profitability. And I'll tell you this, uh, I'll leave you with this. If you want if you want the examples of what it takes to be successful, look at the most successful entrepreneurs in the world and you'd see in their story that they did not do they did not go on their journey by themselves. It was never a solo journey. At every step of their development, to become some of the wealthiest, most successful entrepreneurs, you would see that their journey was supported by other businesses, 
by working with the right contractors, by creating the right relationships that give you the, the ability to not just transform your business, but do so with an exponential leap. So I do want to leave you with the understanding that for you to succeed, remember that your business will only ever be as strong as you are. And it's important that you invest in yourself. And today's testimony to that, the fact that you are here today to be a part of this event says to the world that you're investing in your capacity. You're investing in your ability to transform your business. And I want to applaud you for that. So ladies and gentlemen, with just those few words, I wanna hand over to the lady of the moment, right? Yasne, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve and Jesus and Luby for having me. As you said, the history with not only branches, but the SBDC at FIU and the Navigator program, my heart is really in this community and giving back to entrepreneurs like you. So thank you and congratulations for making the time to be here. This is the best investment that you can make as Steve mentioned. Today, it's 6, 12, and we have scheduled to finish by seven. I encourage you to put your questions in the chat and we're gonna leave a few minutes at the end for Q and A but I'm ready to give you a lot of good information and most importantly, things that you can implement right away in your business. QuickBooks and accounting and bookkeeping is just not the theory, but how can you apply it? And that's what you're gonna learn today. Let me share my screen. Right. <clears throat> Perfect. Can you all see it? Yes, you're good. Awesome. Again, I'm paying attention to the chat. If you have a quick question, uh, you can put it, but if not, hold it until the end and I'll make sure to have a Q&A. Today, uh, very briefly about myself, I am an entrepreneur. Before being an accountant, I, I am an entrepreneur. And with that mindset, I help business owners to organize your finances and operations so you can maximize profits and access capital. And our methodology is really combining the finances, the efficiency, and your mindset, your business and your leadership mindset. I'm an FIU graduate, very proud of it. Our team, we are, most of us are certified with QuickBooks Online, certified with a profit first cash management system. Three of our team members are getting certified with the run like clockwork efficiency program. And I am a neuro-linguistic programmer practitioner. So combining all of these is what really helps me catalyze your business. And today we're going to be learning about how to implement and use QuickBooks efficiently and effectively. Because yes, we all can go and register and sign up, but how do you know if it's working for you? QuickBooks is a great tool to organize your finances, to improve your cash flow. So I'm gonna be covering some basic and intermediate features. And again, this is part one of three. So we're starting with the foundation and we're gonna develop more intermediate and advanced features in the next few weeks. I want you to avoid common mistakes. And I know them all because I see it again and again. And at the end of the day, the reason why you use this system is to create and to analyze your financial statements to make informed financial decisions, okay? So this, this is the flow that we're gonna follow in this QuickBooks training. We're gonna learn how to implement correctly. We're gonna learn how to organize your numbers. We're gonna learn how to analyze your information. Does that sound like a plan? Yes? Put a number one in the chat if you're listening, if you're here with me, if you're paying attention. I'm looking at the chat, please put number one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see we have 
close to 100 participants. So I wanna make sure you're here and you are awake. So first of all, QuickBooks, the online version, which is what we're gonna focus on for this training, QuickBooks Online, this is based on a subscription, right? It's like when you're leasing a car. And there are different subscriptions depending on your needs. When you go to the website, you're gonna see that they have the simple start, essentials, plus, and advanced. To be very honest, simple start, the very basic one, is going to help you create invoices and estimates. You can keep track of your numbers. You can connect it to the bank and credit cards. You can take pictures of your receipts. You can keep track of your mileage. You can keep track of your sales taxes if that applies to you. And even keep track of your contractors and do your 1099s at the end of the year. So as you see, Simple Start does a lot. When will you upgrade to essentials? When you need to integrate it with an e-commerce platform and QuickBooks already has that integration. If you need more people to have access to your QuickBooks in addition to your account, because you already have two users, what they call the account and users, they are included. But if you have more people in your team that are going to be using QuickBooks that are gonna help you with different aspects of it, you might want them to have their own username and their own password so you can keep track of who's doing what, right? And then at the essential level, you get up to three users. If you want to keep track of time and kind of keep track of your bills, that's the essential. When will you go to the plus? Well, when you manage inventory, that's plus. And if you want to learn and implement what they call the project profitability, we're going to be talking about inventory and projects in the next sessions because it's a very important feature. If your business needs it, you need the plus. And advanced is really advanced. Honestly, it has everything QuickBooks has to offer at this point. But you can always start small, start and simple start, or essentials and upgrade, upgrade as you need it. And in this link, you're going to get access to the slides. I share with you a discount rate that is even better than the one they have on the website. So that's going to be available to you. And I'm very hands on when it comes to teaching QuickBooks. So what I'm gonna do, my intention is to go inside this sample company. When you click on this link, Bitly Sample Client, it's going to take you to this website. This is a sample company for Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. And I'm going to be showing you the way from the inside. Anybody has access to that? When you click on it, all you have to say is that you're not a robot and it's gonna let you in. And this is the best way to explore QuickBooks to make mistakes so you don't mess up your own and, and to learn. This is the best way to learn. And what are the things we're gonna learn today? In the implementation piece, again, we're implementing, we're organizing, we're analyzing, right? So in the implementation part, Let's review this, your account and settings, users, custom forms, shot of accounts, and the product and service list. So let me actually show you what I mean by all of that. When you first register to QuickBooks, they're gonna take you through some setup process that you need to answer the questions. They're gonna ask you some basic questions that are gonna allow you to set up your shot of accounts and give you at least, at least some sort of shell with the foundation, but that doesn't end there. You have to understand how to continue the setup and make adjustments. So the first thing, when it comes to account and settings, here in the gear icon, the gear icon at the top, right next to the R, we have a lot of options <laughs> and we're going to be covering them as we go. Number one, account and settings. And this is where you're going to see your usage in terms of what 
what your company information is. You can upload your logo, and this is what's gonna show in your invoicing and your estimates. Here, you can edit in the pencil at any time. Company name, logo, email. Do you want, what is the customer email? In a way, what is the company email? And if you want a customer facing email, you also have the option of not showing the address on the invoicing. If you have a home-based business, you might not want people to see where you live. So all of these options are here, customer facing address, your legal address, is going to give you some information about the usage limits. And this depends on the subscription that you have. Here you have settings around your sales, products and services. All of this, I invite you to explore. I'm gonna give you a very complete resource at the end that's going to show you a little bit more about all of these features. But this is your account and settings. This is like building the plane, right? The type of accounting, are we enabling numbers in the shadow of accounts? A lot of options. So this is kind of the foundation. Now, remember what I was telling you about the users, depending on the subscription, which one you use, you find information about the users here. Gear icon, manage users, all right? So, when you click on manage users, it's going to take you to the different roles. First, you have your regular users. And again, this is a sample company, but normally it's gonna show your name and email, the one that you use to register. And you can modify the level of access that you want that user to have. And this is extremely important because as a business owner, yes, at the beginning, Maybe you are more involved in this, but your goal is to get someone to help you. You're not in the bookkeeping business. So you want to so get the support and this allows you to limit the access that that team member can have, right? So you can customize the roles. Here you have more information about that and it allows you to add up to two accountants. Accountants, have, it's extremely important to use these and give access to your accountant because it allows us to see everything you see. But why am I telling you this? QuickBooks Online has what they call the audit log, right? So let me show you because this is in Spanish what I call El Chismoso de QuickBooks. I don't know the gossip, if you will, in English. The audit log, when you click on tools, you go here to audit log, and this will tell you everything that happens. Look, I'm here in the same company, and pretty much the user is Craig Carlson because that's a sample company. But it's going to tell you everything that happens, who signed in, who did what, by date and time. And this is not to micromanage, but this is for you to have control. I see a lot of frustration where you say, okay, yes, I have someone helping me, but I don't know what they're doing. Well, here you're gonna see what they're doing and what they're not doing. So the audit log is an amazing, amazing tool in QuickBooks Online. So just to understand where you're all at, based on the amount of users, if you could put in the chat based on your company structure, how many users do you anticipate to have? One or three plus? So you can put those options, one or three plus. So I can see where you're at. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing. So now you know that depending on your need, you need to choose the different subscriptions. And the plus gives you up to five users. The advanced, I think, gives you up to 25 users. So there is room for growth, for sure. The other component that I wanted to show you is how you can customize your forms. QuickBooks is an amazing tool for invoicing and sending estimates and really keeping track of, 
of your money. <laughs> That's what we hear, right? Now, when you send an invoice from QuickBooks, you want it to represent your company brand, your style, maybe you might even want to add your logo. So here under the gear icon, you go to custom form styles, and here's where you will modify it. QuickBooks will give you a standard form. And if you click on edit the standard, you can change the design, the colors, the content. You know, you can edit this by sessions and choose what you want to show. And if you didn't know, the beauty and what I love about this tool is that you can send your estimates and your invoices by email. And you can customize here how you want that email to look like when your customer receives it. Do you want the full details? Do you want to summarize? Do you want to attach the PDF as a, in the, of the invoice to the email? Here, you can even customize the message and personalize it to you. You can customize the subject. This is amazing because when the customer receives this, number one is very professional, very professional. And number two, they can click on it if you activate this is a mer merchant service from QuickBooks. If you activate that, they can pay directly from that button. Click pay, put your credit card or your bank account information, that's it. And believe me, as a business owner, your job is to make it as easy as possible for customers to pay you. You want that money fast, okay? So this is a great tool for that. How many of you, and if you could put yes or no in the chat, if you anticipate to use, to send invoices through QuickBooks, put yes. If you're not sending invoices at all, put no. So I get an idea. Okay, so I see most of you are going to send invoices and some no. There are other tools really. Uh, so the majority of you are gonna use it. Great, it's a great tool. Uh, the rates, if you activate the merchant service, are pretty standard in the industry, same as Square or Stripe or other merchant services. And it's just convenient because you have everything in one place. So I'm going to exit without saving. And the beauty of having everything in one place, when you go to sales here, you can see all your sales activities in terms of invoices, estimates, payments. If you want to see at some point how many invoices I have out there, what's the status of my invoices? This is what you get with this tool. And there is nothing more frustrating as a business owner that you put so much effort into delivering your product and your service and you forgot to send that invoice. Or you're all over the place and you don't even know who owes you what. So you don't have the information to follow up with your clients. This will give it to you. Even if you don't send the invoice through QuickBooks, put it here because it will tell you who owes you money, who owes you money and collect your money accordingly, okay? You can mark when it was paid. You can see what's coming and what is overdue. So this is when it comes to invoices and estimates. Here you can create an invoice directly from here. There are different ways to navigate QuickBooks. You, if you go to sales, it prompts you to create the invoice from here. There is another shortcut. If you go to new, you can from the new button in the left navigation panel, you can create an invoice, receive payment, estimate. So this is kind of little shortcuts for you to do most of the activities that you that can be done in QuickBooks, all right? Now, here is the thing, and I'm going to go and make sure you understand two things, very important. The chart of accounts is the skeleton of your bookkeeping system. And I want to, I want to help you avoid some common mistakes that I see in the implementation because this would allow you to organize things correctly. 
How many of you have heard of the chart of account? If you have heard of the chart of accounts, put yes. If you if it's the first time you're hearing about it, put no. And I will gauge who we have here. All right. So it's a oh, I see a lot of no's. So it's 50-50. For those of you that have heard of it, let's do a quick review because I want to make sure that the ones that have put no get a foundational understanding of it. The chart of accounts, when you go to see <clears throat> another thing, QuickBooks, and I got to tell you this, they keep changing the platform almost every month they come up with something new. So what my intention is not for you to memorize any of this, is for you to learn the concepts and where to locate it because they keep changing it. And um, even when you review the course that I'll give you access to, some of the things might look differently because they change it and they make my, my training obsolete. But the foundation, no, almost obsolete because the foundation is still there. So here I'm trying to find the shadow of accounts. When you click on the gear icon, it's going to take you there, chart of accounts. All right, this is the skeleton of everything. And I got to tell you, if your intention is to do your own bookkeeping, at least get the support to make sure that you're implementing this correctly. Because if this is not right, everything else is going to be wrong in your bookkeeping. And there are a few things I got to tell you about your chart of accounts. This is all the possible accounts that are going to then flow into your financials when you classify transactions. And let me show you how this flows. You have your different accounts. Let's start with income, right? You have to receive money. And if you notice in this sample company, they have sub accounts. And this is what I want you to do for your business. Think of, for example, this is a landscaping business. They have landscaping services but they're separating the income for job materials, the income for labor. And even within job materials, they have sub accounts for the different types of job materials. You can go as deep as you want it to go, but it's extremely important that you take advantage of the sub accounts because if you have everything under service income and you have multiple revenue streams, you wanna know where the money is coming from. So this is what you use to keep track of your multiple revenue streams. So when you run your reports, the numbers are in the right place, okay? So use sub accounts for income, and of course, use sub accounts for expenses. For example, here you have automobile, and within automobile, we have fuel. I would add a few more here. I would add parking, I would add tolls, I would add repairs and maintenance of my car. Those are the things that we want to modify. So let me show you how you would add an account. You will go to new, the new button. There's always have a green button that that's kind of the action. And you say, okay, I want to create an expense, but I want to create a sub account for automobile. So you already have an account for that. You can search it. Right, and let's say, okay, I wanna create an account and save it under automobile. What is the tax form session? Okay, this is the deduction, kind of the description for tax purposes is an auto expense. What is the account name? Well, I wanna create an account for parking because I do that a lot. I wanna know how much I'm spending in parking. And look, it automatically shows you how it would look like in the list, automobile, we had fuel, now we had parking, and you save it. And this is how you build your chart of accounts. You want to do this before you even start classifying anything. You can always add accounts in the future, edit accounts, but at least get the foundation, okay? And how this links to your bookkeeping and to your reports, let me show you. The beauty of QuickBooks is that you can connect it to your bank accounts 
and credit cards, whether it's saving or checking or PayPal, all of these you can connect. There is no limit for the amount of accounts you can link to QuickBooks. You need to just click on link account. It's gonna search what is the bank. Most of the financial institutions are here. And if it's not, you can search for it, right? For example, I use an online bank called Bluevine. It was not in the session, but yeah, I look for it and it shows, right? In the sample company, it's not gonna let you connect to the bank because this is a sample company. But when you use the real one, it's gonna prompt you to enter your username and password. The one you use to log into your online banking. And let me clarify, nobody is gonna get access to your money. <laughs> QuickBooks does not access your bank. All it does is that it brings the transaction so you don't have to do the manual data entry, okay? So you can connect checking accounts, savings, credit cards, PayPal. These, if it's a beauty of this system of having everything online, because guess what? It facilitates a lot of this process. Now, when you connect it, it's going to show you, you have transactions for review. So let's say the example of this checking account. You have 25 transactions pending for review. QuickBooks needs you to review the information and to put it in the right place. What they're doing here is just bringing the data, but not until you take the time to click on it and tell QuickBooks what account it belongs to is not gonna show in your report, okay? And what, what account it belongs to is linked to the chart of accounts, okay? So we just went over the skeleton, right? This is your chart of accounts right here. That's the list. And this is what I'm telling you is very crucial for you to align your accounts to what you want to keep track of. So when you classify it, you put it in the right place. If the account doesn't exist, you can always add a new account from here and it's going to take you through the process. Make sure when you're categorizing transactions, you put a vendor or customer. It's optional, but I highly encourage you to put it because then you can run reports by vendor. You can run reports by customers. And that's what gives you the data you're looking for. You might think, how about if I transfer the money from one account to the other? Well, you can always record a transfer, right? If you transfer from checking to savings, well, that's exactly what we're gonna do in QuickBooks, recorded as a transfer, all right? What about the mileage? I'm gonna show you the mileage in another class. I, I'm not sure if it's part two or part three, but we're gonna talk about mileage and how you can keep track of it from the app or from the online site, okay? So Mario is asking, is the shot of accounts the list of expenses and income by category? The shot of accounts has income, expenses, assets, liabilities, equity, it has everything. Everything is the skeleton of your bookkeeping system. And now that we're talking about that, let me actually show you a couple of things. And then I'm gonna go into the financials so you get to see how it all connects because at the end of the day, as business owners, again, we're not in the bookkeeping business. We want the information to see the data, to see those financials, to make informed financial decisions, all right? But there are two things I wanna show you here. From banking, you can create rules, right? Meaning you can automate your bookkeeping. If you are always, let's pretend, we have a transaction here and you see a lot of matches. I'm gonna go into that a little bit, but let's say Higgs Hardware, right here, $2438 on July 24. Let's pretend that with this customer, every time they go to Higgs Hardware is to buy supplies and materials. That's it. That's what they buy in Higgs Hardware. 
So they want to create a rule and tell QuickBooks, every time you see a transaction from Higgs, just put it under supplies and materials. It's, it's the all same category. So you can create a rule and tell QuickBooks, okay, this is my Higgs hardware. When you see money going out from, you can choose the account or put all accounts. So when you see money going out from the bank accounts and the description contains Higgs hardware, I want you to put it as an expense. I want you to put it on the category of supplies. And the payee is Higgs hardware, that's the vendor. And you can tell QuickBooks, and you know what? Add it automatically to my books because I don't wanna see it in my review. Just add it to my books. And when you say that rule, everything that happened in the past and is happening in the future is gonna go to that category, okay? So rules are time savers, but please do not use rules for Zelle because Zelle, when you do those filters, it, it might put it in the wrong place because Zelle, you know, when you see Zelle, you could use Zelle for different things. So do not use rules for Zelle or for transactions that can be mixed up with other things, all right? And last but not least in this session, I want to highly, highly emphasize the importance of matching the money coming in with the payments if you're using invoices. And QuickBooks is actually doing you the favor of telling you when they find a match. You see, this money came in on August 11th. It's a deposit of $868. Uh, dollars with 15 cents, QuickBooks is telling you, oh, what match found? So when you click on it, it tells you, I found a match. This deposit seems to belong to this deposit that you marked in the invoice as paid. It's extremely important that we do these matches. Even if QuickBooks didn't find it, when you know the money came in, because it was an invoice that you mark as paid, you have to find the match. Otherwise, it's going to duplicate your income because it's going to show that the money was received through the invoice and the money was received again. And you're going to see a lot of money in your financials and you're going to ask yourself, where is that money? <laughs> because it's not in my bank account, okay? So matching is extremely, extremely crucial. So all of these, it it's connected to the register. And QuickBooks, again, you, it gives you the transactions for review. As you categorize them and you match them, it's going to come here to categorize. And when they are categorized, then they're going to show in your register. If from your bank account, you go to the bank register, which again, this is another account that is going to reflect on your chart of accounts, you can see everything that has been classified in QuickBooks. Whether it, was, whether it was from the bank or if you do it manually, sometimes you're doing things in QuickBooks and you don't even remember what you did, use two things. Use the audit log and check your register. This is where you can see if the accounts have been reconciled. We're gonna be talking about reconciliations in, in another classes. The register is really everything that has been recorded. And it has to be recorded for it to reflect on your financials. Just by you seeing the transactions for review doesn't automatically add it to your QuickBooks, okay? Is that clear? Cool? All right, so let me go over then the financials really quickly because at the end of the day, the reason why we do bookkeeping is to get the financials, right? And as business owners, that's what you really care about. So this is what allows us to analyze. And let me show you really quickly. We went over organizing the bank accounts, classifying transactions, the use of rule, match deposits and invoice, and the QuickBooks register. And now we want to analyze. And let me give you this analogy so you understand what we are analyzing. When it comes to the financials, I want you to think of your financials as a tree, 
Okay? The three. With my accent, I will confuse three and three, but just look at the picture. I'm talking about a, a tree without the ish. <laughs> so when the tree, it has the leaves, right? So think of the leaves of that seasonality. They come and go depending on the season of the year. Your leaves is the profit and loss, all right? Profit and loss, your money comes and go. Some, some years you have an income, some years you have a loss. Some months are good, some months are not. It fluctuates. Those are your leaves. They come and go. The balance sheet is the trunk of the tree. And if you see the trunk in this image, it has rings. I don't know much about the subject, but I do know the people that know about it, when they look at the rings of a trunk, they can tell the history of that tree. And the same, the balance sheet Will tell you the history of that business and i'll show you how to interpret that history how the lenders and the potential investors are going to interpret that history so you know what your numbers are telling the numbers tell the story right and the balance sheet is going to show that story and cash flow statement think of it as the water the train needs water to survive we need the water to flow. We need the cash to flow in order to have a successful business. So if you don't remember at least the definitions to start with, remember the three. Leaves, trunk, water, all right? So in the slides, I'm not gonna go over detail, but you're gonna have access to understand the different components of your tree, the different components of the leaves, the different components of the trunk and the examples of what it belongs and the different components of the water. And at, that comes to the question someone about the shot of accounts. The shot of accounts represents all of this. It's not only income and expenses. We wanna see the assets, the liabilities, the equity, and all of that is going to be reflected on your financials, okay? So with that in mind, before going to the questions, let me show you how QuickBooks is going to make your life so easy when it comes to running your financials and interpreting them when your data is organized, okay? You're gonna go to reports and I wanna give you some tricks of how to use this because yes, there are all types of reports here, not only profit and loss and balance sheet and statement of cash flow, but you have a bunch of reports in terms of customer sales by customer, open invoices, accounts receivable, accounts payable. This is a long list. And depending on the subscription that you have, you're going to have more or less. But even the simple start, you're going to have the basic reports that we need to analyze. So let's start with those. When you look at your profit and loss, right, it's going to give you options. And you're going to click on what is the time period that you want to run this for. You can run it by year, by week, by month, by quarter, last year. The, you know, so many options. And you can always change the date here because all this does for you is change the date. So let's say I want to see it for last quarter and then it changed the day here from April to June. So that's all it does. The beauty of this is that you can also display columns by. So you can display it by customer, by vendors, by products and services. I like to interpret my numbers looking by month, uh, at least big picture. And when I do months, let me show you what happens. You run the report, and you get your numbers. So that way you can compare, right? But you know what's the beauty of this? Even if you do the totals, when you have the essential subscription, this applies for essentials, you can compare to another period. So let's say I wanna compare this year to the previous year, right? And I wanna see the change in numbers and percentage. When I run this, look, I can come, and, and this is a sample company. It's not going to have much data in the past, but it gives you the comparison reports 
and it tells you the amount of change by number and by percentage. The other thing that I like to do is to run this report by the percentage of income and percentage of expense. Hmm. This is very eye-opening because when I do that, let me see, I'm gonna do all dates to see if I get more data. So look, this is gonna give me the information in terms of, yes, I have income. I have all these categories and subcategories because I set it up correctly in my chart of accounts and I'm classifying things in the right account. Great, you have data, but this allows you to analyze that data and say, okay, let's say my total job materials represent 46, 43% of my total income. And out of that, 22% is design income. What this tells you is the information you need to make decisions. Do, where do you wanna focus your time? Where do you want to put some fuel for the marketing? Where do you need to hire people to support you? This is data that you want, okay? So you can see the percentage of income for category, the percentage of expenses. Look, here I'm seeing that 21% of all my expenses went to legal and professional fees, right? And that 17% are going to maintenance and repair. So what decisions can I make to improve this? to increase my income, to reduce my expenses, because at the end of the day, that's what we're in business for. When you do that simple math, income up, expenses down, your margin, your profit is going to increase, right? So these tools, amazing. You can compare, you can see by different displays, gives you so much data, how much money is coming per customer, so much information, I invite you to explore it. And you can always run your accounting and your reports on cash and accrual. Do you know the difference between cash and accrual? You can put yes or no in the chat. Cash and accrual. Okay, let's see if you know. All right, so let me explain it really quickly because this is extremely important. Most small business run let me take out the comparison so I can show you and you can see how the report looks like. Let's say that I wanna run a report for this year, okay? And I wanna see the totals. If I run this in cash, look how the report looks like. It's gonna tell me my income and my expenses, right? But the cash is gonna put the income when I receive the money when I receive it, cash in my pocket, right? In the accrual, let's see, the total income in cash is 5,080.27 so far. What happened if I run it in accrual? Click run report. My total income in accrual is $10,000, it's double. Why? Because accrual is taking into account the open invoices that you have. The money that you earned because you deliver your service or your product, but the, the customer hasn't paid you yet. And the method that you use depends on who you're presenting it to. To Uncle Sam at the IRS, you might wanna show them cash because you don't wanna pay taxes on the money that you haven't received. But when you're applying for a loan, when you're trying to get capital, you wanna show them the accrual as well. So they say, you know what? These are the sales that I have accomplished. I'm just pending to collect it. So you can see the difference, huh? It applies for income. It applies for expenses as well. The difference between getting the cash in the packet or paying and the cash is leaving your pocket or accrual is when you earned it. You earned your income. You're waiting for the invoice to be paid or you incur the expense because let's say that a customer sent you, not a customer, but let's say like a vendor sent you a bill. The bill is on your desk, but you haven't paid it. In accrual, that bill is an expense that you incur. 
in cash is not going to count until you actually pay it. All right. So that leaves us five minutes really quickly. Other reports that you can see here is the balance sheet and the statement of cash flow. What I'm going, I mean, you can run it. Everything is going to give you all the information. This is not a full accounting class, even though I love, love to teach this concept so you get to interpret it. But my goal is that you know how QuickBooks can present this information when everything is classified. But in the slides, you're going to get to see what is part of each statement, what are some of the examples. And if I have time in the next class, I'm going to give you a more quick overview of how to interpret them because it's extremely important to as business owners. We have four minutes, so I'm happy to take any questions uh, that you might have based on the information we covered today. And today, my focus was to give you an overview of the platform, some of the key functionalities, and then we're gonna continue next week. Yes, we're gonna email the PowerPoint for sure. Uh, you're gonna receive the PowerPoint. So thanks for that question. If you have any other questions, I'm paying attention to the chat. Um, and yes, Ma Mario asked earlier, if accounts are the things in business that bring income and what income goes to like expenses, and by labeling how you can keep track of the money. Yes, that's exactly it, Mario. By labeling those transactions, you, you're telling QuickBooks, this belongs to this category, and then it's going to reflect on your financials. But it's not only income and expenses. This is why learning how to use your balance sheet and the statement of cash flows is important because you can see also how much money you had in the bank, what is the balance for your accounts receivable? What is your balance for accounts payable? If you have loans, how much you owe, how much you own in credit cards, all of this information you get in the balance sheet. So it's more than income and expenses, it's everything that you can possibly classify, okay? What QuickBooks does is if the money came in, let's say you got a loan and it's $20,000, you don't want to classify that as income. That's a loan. So you're going to put it in the loan category and then it's going to show in your balance sheet instead. So I see a few more questions. Let's see. Is there a big difference from desktop to the online version? Uh, the functionality when it comes to bookkeeping is very similar. Uh, I think the biggest thing is that with the online the subscription already includes that the connection to the bank, the rules, the connection to e-commerce platforms. It facilitates the process in this online world. With desktop, you can integrate some of those features, but you have to pay extra. And to be honest, where the world is heading, where QuickBooks is heading is online. They are little by little getting rid of desktop. So that's what's happening. I understand percentage expenses, but can you explain what percentage income is? Well, that's a good question because in a way, you got clear the percentage expenses. When you do the sub accounts for income, like this company has, right? In this case, they separated, let me see, because it has like a better profit and loss. So this is what I'm telling you that they, change the format. Let me open the other version. Uh, in this case, because we did the sub accounts in the shadow accounts, we have income, but we did have different sources of income. For example, job materials, it has income for the fountain, for the plants and the soil, right? And then it has income for labor too. When you do the percentage of income, it allows you to see percentage of income, out of all the money that came in, what service it belonged to, right? Out of all the money that, that I sold for job materials, 
22% of that money was because of the fountains and garden lighting. 23% was plants and soil. So that's what percentage of income gives you. Where is the money coming from? What category, what line of revenue, okay? Yes, they have a support line. You can always contact QuickBooks if you have questions. Uh, I do highly, highly recommend QuickBooks Banking to simplify accounting. Yes, please categorize everything as much as you can from banking. If you have some cash transactions and they don't go through the bank, you can always add them manually. But if your money is going through the bank, use QuickBooks Banking. And that's included in the subscription. You don't have to pay extra. I see someone put questions in the Q&A box. So I'm gonna look at that. Uh, decide to practice QuickBooks. I'm gonna put it in the slide. So it gives you access. Um, let me actually see if I can <clears throat> just copy and paste it here. So took you to another tab, but I put it in the chat so you have quick access as well. Um, I see there are more questions, but we're running out of time. Should we stay for a few more minutes? I don't mind. Okay, yes, Nay. I have uh, questions, ready? Sure. If I have my website in a platform which collects payments through Stripe, um, this could be connected with QuickBooks or how could it be related? Very good question. The, the platform itself can be connected. It, you got to make sure you do it right. Otherwise, we duplicate things. But even if you don't connect the platform itself, those Stripe income is going to go to your bank, right? It's going to show us deposits in your bank account. And if you have your banking connected to QuickBooks, you can classify the money there. So it depends on how detail you want to be, it can be done both ways. Um, when is suggested online versus des uh, desktop QuickBooks and, or vice versa? The question itself was, what is that? Um, um, well, when is it suggested to use QuickBooks online versus desktop QuickBooks? Yes. Um, well, if you, the only way I, what most accountants recommend the desktop for is when you have a manufacturing business, the online is still is not as strong for manufacturing. Desktop has a more robust platform for manufacturing. Everything else can be done in online. So it's just a matter of choosing um, the flexibility of having everything. Online. I just started to have sales. What do you recommend regarding at what level of revenue um, begin to use this tool? I need you to start using this tool on day one. Okay. Day one, <laughs> all right? I use a simple start license online. I, do not, I don't know what happened, but the account category changed from professional and legal fee to training and seminar. What, uh, what could have happened? Well, it could have been that maybe you created a rule by mistake or something, we can always reclassify transactions and do it in bulk. Always check the rules. Always check the rules because sometimes when you're classifying things, QuickBooks would pop up this message and say, oh, do you want to add a rule? And you're like, yes, yes, let me go. And then you're adding rules and you don't even know what it's all about. So that's a big common mistake. Why do invoices and estimates frequently land on, in spam? Um, how can we avoid this? In a spam for your clients, uh, uh, that's a good question. I haven't experienced that. And that has more to do with what your client is using to filter those, those messages. Uh, you might want to check if it's some particular clients that are having it, because I normally don't hear that feedback from my clients. But if you want to double check, just send the email as well from your email with the okay. invoice attached or the link does, to the invoice. Does QuickBook link to entities such as Eventbrite? Eventbrite for payments, not that I'm aware of specifically Eventbrite. Uh, what it does is when you get paid, Eventbrite, you might want to connect, okay, what's gonna be your deposit account? And that's what's gonna be linked to QuickBook. 
what if you put something in the wrong account and need to go back and correct that? Can you do that? Of course. The beauty of QuickBooks is that you can always undo what you have done. Always. So yes, you can change things, reclassify. We're going to go over how to do that in the next classes because it's very common and things can always be updated. That's what most of us do as accountants. <laughs> Uh, how can I register a new car? A new car? Mm -hmm. Like a card? Credit card? A car. Uh, room, room. Room, room. Car. Okay. <laughs> well, that has to do more with the accounting side of things. You can always put your car as an asset, but you have to say, okay, is this qualified to be a business asset or it's more of a personal car? If not, you need to split based on the usage of the car. So yes, you can record it. It's gonna be an asset or an expense depending on how you use it for business. That's more of an accounting classification. Can QuickBooks connect to my Shopify store to collect the sales and payouts? Yes, QuickBooks connects to Shopify. Uh, it's, it has a very nice implementation through different apps. And I'm gonna be showing you how the apps work in linking all of these channels. Okay. Okay. Can I present this type of financial reports to the IRS without being, um, you know, without with a CPA? Yes. Um, you don't need to have a CPA to to present the reports to the IRS. I assume you're you're asking for tax purposes in order to file your taxes. They don't need to be audited or reviewed by a CPA. If you are confident that they look accurate go for it and file your taxes. Just make sure uh, they are accurate. <laughs> Anyways, even if they're reviewed by a CPA, if there is something wrong, the IRS is gonna ask you, not your CPA. So it's your responsibility at the end of the day. Okay, uh, do you recommend using QuickBooks banking to simplify uh, QuickBooks accounting? Yes, I think I answered to that question and I 100% recommend it. Okay. And then um, I think this one's going to be for me. Uh, the next class will be on the 13th. Um, I put the um, the link at the, at the chat. Uh, it will be the 13th at 6 p.m., so part two, along with a small recap from today's presentation as a refresher um, and carry on the, the baton and conversation uh, from today's presentation. Now, I know that there are some questions in the chat, so I just want to make sure that I'm able to answer any questions. Um, but once again, today's presentation has been recorded. All participants will be receiving today's presentation and the link for our YouTube channel. So definitely encourage you to like and subscribe as well. Okay. Uh, let me see if there's any additional questions. No problem. Thank you for your time. And that's, uh, no, but thank you for attending today's webinar. That's, that is the thank you. Um, <laughs> let me see. From the looks of it, I don't see any additional questions. Um, maybe if I'm missing some, Steve, Steve Luby. Okay. I oh, think I saw um, one. I saw, about what about this. mileage? What about mileage? Where do you put that in the chart? Yeah, we're going to go over mileage in the next classes um, in more detail because it's about using the app. I saw another question about how much is the monthly subscription for what was reviewed today? Most of what was reviewed today, you can do in simple start. You're gonna need essentials if you want to see the comparative reports in terms of the percentage of income, the percentage of expenses. That is a feature that is at the essential level, but everything else is okay at the simple start. Is the chart of accounts, the list of expenses and incomes by categories? I think I went over that, the chart of accounts has Everything, income, expenses, assets, liabilities, equity, uh, everything is there. This is like learning a new language. So I want you to think of it like that. The first time you're hearing about all these terms and you're like, oh my gosh, this is foreign to me. But participate in the rest of the classes and things are gonna start clicking as we go. But shout of accounts is everything. It's the skeleton of your accounting system. Okay. Um, how will you access your QuickBooks account if your internet or power is off? Uh, that's a good question. For the most part, you need internet. <laughs> they have the option to download a desktop app. So when your internet is off, 
it you can continue doing the work and then it sinks. Uh, but it's a cloud system, so you can work around it, but for the most part, the internet will be necessary. How do I disconnect and delete my personal bank accounts? You can always unlink the accounts. That's a very good question, very common. So please, thanks for asking that question because some people do that, not knowing that you should not. So you can unlink it. Um, let me make a note on that so I can show you in the, in the next class how to unlink your accounts and delete the personal transactions as okay. well. And then in the time being, um, what are the price points for what was received today for QuickBooks session? The price point in terms of the subscription, mm -hmm. um, the subscription, the simple start right now is at $30 per month. The link I share with you, you're gonna get it at $21 per month for a whole year, okay? Then the essential goes to $60 per month, the regular price. But if you use the link, you'll pay $42. And then things go up from there. At least you'll pay $21 per month with the discount. I understand um, percentage expense, uh, but can you explain what percent income is? Oh, I, I did explain that, okay. Jesus, and okay. I even showed it on the screen. So I think I got to answer okay. that question. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's see. All right, so I think a question out of the three sessions you mentioned, implement, organize, analyze, what the next class will cover? Well, in the way we are still covering those categories, but in the next session, we're gonna go more in detail on some other intermediate and advanced features. We're going to learn how to use projects. We're going to learn how to undo things when, when you did something correct how to reclassify transactions, how to connect your list of products and services to the shot of accounts, how to deal with sales taxes. So there is more that goes into managing a business from the bookkeeping standpoint. So we're developing as we go, but the intention at the end of the day is for you to implement, organize and analyze. We're just giving you more advanced features Yes, it, it, at the end of the day, it's going to become like a snowball effect. You gain the traction. So like, just like running a marathon, you started with oh, right. a 10K, half, then a full marathon. You're not going to start running a full marathon without training. So having, connecting the dots, getting your, your hands dirty, then you become confident and um and fully getting those aha moments as you're getting sales. And now start doing the plug and plays with these three sessions all at once. Okay. Yes, and that takes me to share the resources. If you want to get ready to run your marathon, <laughs> you can always go to, I'm going to share this QR code for a full QuickBooks training where you can keep running and training and, and come with great questions for the next class, okay? And this is my contact info. Feel free to follow me on Instagram under Yasneida Montalvo. And I'm happy to connect with you there as well. But I will see you next week. Okay. So um, like I said, just email me um for any questions if we didn't um you know ask, um you know yes I didn't answer at this moment. Um because I want to be respectful with your time and yes any time and Steve's time. So like I said, just send me an email and that will be one of the first questions um that we'll have for next week's presentation. But like I said, looking forward to seeing you all um for next week's part two. And um, you know, thank you, thank you once again for attending, and I'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank hey, you. Steve. Thank you. His name. Go, just a couple. There's a couple of things, right? Um, I do want to encourage everyone to review Yasne's information before the next event. And for those of you that joined B1, that applied to join, several of you have not uploaded your personal photos. So if you want the approval tonight, you do have to upload your personal photos in your profile. Right, so we did already approve several members, new members to be one, and for the rest of you that would like to join, please, up, you know, upload your your picture, not not a copy of your logo, not a graphic. It has to be your picture, right? So thanks, so thanks as well, Yasne. Thank you so much on behalf of Branches, Jesus. Thanks as well, and everyone have a pleasant good night. Thank you from Branches for attending. Thank you. Good night. See you next week.